gentlemen, as you take your seats, we will be joined by this year's graduates of the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences.
Graduates, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and welcome the faculty of the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences. And gentlemen, the Dean of the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences and his distinguished guests, joined by this year's Luther Rice and undergraduate research fellows. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good afternoon, I'm Alan Wade, Marshal of the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences. On behalf of the Dean, the faculty of Columbian College, I'm delighted to welcome you to this celebration for our baccalaureate candidates in the 196th year of the George Washington University. We congratulate all of our graduates and join with you, their families and friends, in celebration this weekend as we share sincere pride in our graduates' achievement. In addition to greeting each of our graduates, and celebrating accomplishments this afternoon, we'll also honor faculty excellence in student mentoring and teaching. Each year, a representative group of graduates of the college, on behalf of all of the graduates, is asked to nominate a member of the faculty to speak on this occasion. This year's faculty speaker is Arun Malik, professor of economics and of public policy and public administration. Professor Malik. Good afternoon, class of 2017. It is a privilege to be addressing you. 
Over the past few weeks, in fits and starts, I've been pondering what I should share with you. There was a lot of head scratching, or to be more accurate, turban scratching. <laughs> Tempting as it was to share key bits of economic wisdom, I decided to talk about something simpler, namely being open-minded, but not in the context one might think relevant in this day and age, but in the context of the changes and new experiences that you will invariably encounter in the months and years ahead. Some of these changes and experiences will be difficult and unwelcome, but keep an open mind to learning from them, even if they are difficult and unwelcome. Let me start with an example that I know well. I'm standing here today as a professor of economics at GW. I periodically wonder how the heck this happened. Friends from college have done the same. Why? Because I disliked my first economics course taken as a freshman with an intensity that I suspect some of you shared. Hopefully not too many of you since you were taught by my colleagues and friends. I swore up and down that I would never take another economics course in my life. But as is often the case, I had to take another economics course for my major. I dreaded taking that second course and put it off until second semester senior year. I suspect that sounds familiar. To my surprise, that second course went over much better. But I continued with my plan to pursue graduate study in environmental science. While in grad school, I ventured into another economics course. I found that I actually liked the stuff a lot. After much hemming and hawing, I switched to studying economics. As an aside, and speaking as someone who came to the US for college as an international student, one of the wonders of the educational system in the US is that one can change fields of study even after college. In most parts of the world, one cannot. We are fortunate to have an educational system that allows us to act on new experiences and new information and to change direction. Many of you have a clear sense of what interests you and what doesn't, and what it is you do and don't want to do in life. At least you think you have a clear sense. Others, perhaps most of you, aren't quite sure of where your interests lie and what it is you want to do in life. That can be unsettling at best and downright terrifying at worst. Regardless of which group you're in, keep an open mind to learning about yourself and learning about what the world has to offer. The example of a recent GW graduate who I got to know quite well is a good case in point. Zach was an economics major who graduated in 2009. He had all the trappings of someone who would, in due course, go on to grad school in economics. Zach started off working at a DC area economic consulting firm. As is not uncommon for entry-level positions at such firms, Zach found himself doing little economics on the job. Instead, he was tasked with learning basic computer programming so that he could write computer programs to manipulate large data sets. A few months into the job, over lunch at Bertucci's, where else, Zach lamented the limited use he was making of his economic training and the struggles he faced learning computer programming on the fly. This was not what he wanted to be doing. I walked away from that lunch feeling bad that Zach was not happier with his job. I heard from Zach again after a gap of a couple of years. He had moved to Austin. He was no longer working as an economist. Instead, he was working as a software engineer, using the programming skills that he had picked up at his earlier job. He found that he really enjoyed developing software. Zach was in town a few months ago, and we had lunch at, where else, Bertucci's. I learned that he had started his own small software consulting firm and that he was embarking on a master's in computer science in an online program at Georgia Tech. Walking away from lunch, I could not help but think of the contrast between Zach's demeanor and mood at this lunch and our first lunch a few months out of GW. The unwelcome requirement of his first job to learn programming had launched him on a path that he now relished. 
I could never have imagined this outcome, and I doubt he could have either. I could tell other such stories of GW graduates. First jobs that were considered second best or uninteresting led to paths that turned out to be engaging and satisfying, paths that were quite different from the ones anticipated when leaving college. So my parting advice is to be open-minded about the experiences and changes that you will encounter over the coming years, even if they are difficult and unwelcome. Life really can work in mysterious ways. Thank you, congratulations to all of you, and all the best in the years ahead. Robert W. Kenny, who served as Dean of the Columbian College, was particularly supportive as a department chair and as Dean of quality teaching, especially in introductory courses. When Dean Kenny retired, his colleagues honored him by endowing a prize to be awarded each year to a faculty member in arts and sciences, nominated by students, who has demonstrated an imaginative or innovative approach to teaching in an introductory or basic course in a discipline. This year's winner of the Robert W. Kenny Prize is Holly Dugan, Associate Professor of English. Professor Dugan, please uh, join me at the podium. Professor Dugan was nominated by her students and colleagues for her groundbreaking new course, Literature and the Financial Imagination, and for the inspiring ways in which she builds skills in critical thinking and written communication. Her new course, which began as a partnership with the School of Business, is not about business, but rather pulls in a range of literary works designed to investigate questions of money, exchange, value, the corporation, and other themes, focusing on key intersections between literary and financial cultures. One student wrote, innovative is the perfect word to describe the literature and the financial imagination course. With a reading list that is varied and intertwined in discussion that pushed the boundaries, Professor Dugan found a way to put a fresh, unique, and real world spin on the traditional English course. A colleague of Professor Dugan's wrote, the course is innovative in its cross-disciplinary intersections, but it's also innovative in its mode of instruction. It's a large class with a small class feel. Professor Dugan has found a way through group work, intense and interactive workshopping, and assignments that demanded creativity to teach a big class in an intimate manner that respects each student for their thinking and their contributions to the class. For her imagination and zeal to kickstart an exciting and rigorous new program that crosses school boundaries, her passion for the subject at hand, a teaching style that is incredibly engaging, and her care for the learning styles of each and every student, the college is pleased to present Professor Holly Dugan with the Robert W. Kenny Prize for 2017. Congratulations. Dean Elizabeth Chaco will now present the Columbian Prize for teaching and mentoring advanced undergraduate students. Professor Klein, will you join me at the podium, please? Professor Diane Klein joined GW's Department of History in 2015. She is an exceptional teacher who is devoted to her students and their academic success. A historian of ancient Greece, she is also deeply committed to, to the development of GW's initiative to support innovation through cross-disciplinary collaboration. Her students describe Professor Klein as an experiential professor who wishes for her students to truly understand and appreciate their intellectual pursuits through hands-on learning. Students in her Alexander the Great seminar 
traveled to northern Greece as part of the course. There, her students were able to experience cultural and archaeological autopsies and walk among the ruins of the palace where Alexander was born. In her classical Athens course, uh, Professor Klein was not able to physically transport students to the Parthenon in Athens. However, she brought the Parthenon to her students. She arranged for several guest lectures from scholars who have dedicated their academic lives to the history and archaeology of the Parthenon. Diane Klein is a critical part of the history department's efforts to increase its undergraduate majors and to broaden and deepen their senior capstone experience. Not only did she advise the history department's first digital history senior thesis, she also served as primary advisor to five other senior theses and a reader for two more undergraduate senior theses, besides being an informal advisor to several more. In addition to her faculty role in GW's history department, Professor Klein also serves as the founding director of the cross-disciplinary collaboration initiative known as XD at GW. Her passion is network weaving. In other words, finding people with the same intellectual interests but who are in diverse departments and serving as a bridge to bring them together. Today, Professor Klein receives the Columbian Prize for teaching and mentoring advanced undergraduate students. Congratulations, Professor Klein. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. So we have a... Each spring, faculty nominate an exceptional undergraduate who has evidenced outstanding scholarship through a composition, research paper, or project that expresses originality or demonstrates depth of knowledge as a distinguished scholar in the college. Paul Scotty is one of our distinguished scholars this year. A psychology major with a concentration in cognitive neuroscience, Paul has been described by his faculty recommenders as being in the top 1% of students they've ever taught. He has worked in the Attention and Cognition Lab since his sophomore year and has collaborated with the Visual Cognition Lab since his junior year. Passionate about furthering scholarship, Paul has presented research at several national conferences, including the Vision Sciences Conference in Florida, and the Object Perception, Visual Attention, and Visual Memory Meeting in Massachusetts. A Luther Rice Fellow, he was recently awarded first place in the psychology group at GW Research Days for his poster investigating the role of target frequency in visual research. Paul is currently in the process of preparing two manuscripts for publication. He is the first author on one, and is co-authoring another with a postdoctoral researcher. After being accepted into all 13 cognitive neuroscience PhD programs to which he applied, Paul has accepted an offer at Ohio State University. He hopes to use behavioral, eye tracking, and fMRI methods to study the mechanisms underlying attention and learning. Thank you, and congratulations to everyone for finally completing college. Also, shout outs to my loving parents who didn't know I would be up here right now. Surprise. <laughs> uh, when I first arrived at GW, I actually didn't like it here, but I thought, I thought maybe with time, I would come to love it. Anyway, <laughs> it, <laughs> anyway, in my second year, I founded the GW Tabletop Gaming Society, where we play board games every week. 
And it was here that I met many close friends, trading wheat for sheep, role-playing in Dungeons and Dragons, and collecting $200 for pass and go. Uh, but don't actually play Monopoly, it's a horrible board game. Uh, while it's admittedly geeky, I found my place at GW, but I also found a passion for research. I joined the Attention and Cognition Lab my sophomore year, and I was very fortunate because this lab perfectly suited my interests and was full of extremely caring and supportive people. I remember walking into Dr. Sarah Schamstein's office without ever meeting her before, and yeah, and mumbling, she's a great professor, that's why you see her woos. Uh, I was mumbling about how I like neuroscience and don't know what I should be doing with my life. And so she was like, join my lab. And two and a half years later, we have multiple ongoing projects and I have several publications in the works. I've also been able to travel all over North America to learn and share work with other researchers. And it's a lot of fun coming up with new ideas, testing them out, working with other people to add to the field. But one of the main things that I learned from research is that you have to be really stubborn. Most experiments don't work out and you just have to keep at it. Lucky for me, I've always been very stubborn. For example, I've always had a lot of trouble waking up in the morning and I was determined to fix this problem. So among the many things that I've tried, I wore an electric shock bracelet on my wrist I had a secondary alarm on my laptop that blasted bad music, so I would have to wake up beforehand or my roommates would hate me, and they did hate me. <laughs> I've tried moving my alarm, but then I would sleep on the floor, and I even tried a system where if I didn't wake up on time, an embarrassing picture would automatically be posted to Facebook, <laughs> and that picture got flagged. So they all didn't work. And what I realized is that you have to be stubborn and the solution that worked for me is just to fight it and fight back the grogginess and actually wake up, which is unfortunately not what we want to hear. And life hacks promise a better life with less effort, but oftentimes these shortcuts, we get so caught up in them that we never make steps towards progress. So think about the person who won't go to the gym unless they know for a fact that they have the perfect workout regimen, or the person who never starts their dream business because they always need to do just a little more research before they get going, the person who spends more time looking up ways to stop procrastination than actually doing work. <laughs> if you're lucky enough to already know your passion or to have a goal that you want to achieve, it's still easy to get lost in the process and that feeling's always there. We need to battle it head on and not feel pressured to go down a certain route just because of the fear of failure. Although to be fair, I'm saying all of this and college is supposed to prepare you for the real world and I'm off to get a PhD and stay in school forever. <laughs> so I just wanna say congratulations, good luck and enjoy the real world. Hello, that's a hard act to follow, but I'll try. <laughs> Hi, I'm Debbie Wheeler, and I'm happy to be here with you today on, as you celebrate your graduation, and I'm a proud member of the GW Alumni Association Board of Directors and serving as the Columbian College representative to the board. On behalf of the GW Alumni Board, as well as the entire association, I offer congratulations to each of you, as well as congratulations to your parents and others who made it possible for you to be here today. The GW Alumni Association represents over 275,000 alumni across the globe and works to strengthen the relationship between alumni and the university. GW alumni are making history and changing the world every day through their service to the community, contributions to their professions, and their dedication to GW as loyal alumni. 
The Alumni Association supports GW alumni through its networking, career, and social opportunities. We hope that you will be actively involved with GW and take advantage of the resources that the university and its Alumni Association provide. As you leave commencement ceremonies on the Mall tomorrow, you will become members of the lifelong and worldwide GW alumni community. We encourage you to embrace our philosophy of colonials helping, colo helping colonials as you take on the world and all the opportunities ahead of you. The GW Alumni Association has a great tradition of recognizing a graduating student from each school who has shown a commitment to the university outstanding leadership in campus and community activities, and academic and extracurricular accomplishments. This year's recipient of the Alumni Prize from the Columbian College is Logan Davis. Uh, Logan, can you please join me at this podium? Logan is a political science major with a 3.9 grade point average, and he also minored in history and art history. As with many of his graduates, uh, Logan participated in a number of internships, including service in the office of Representative Rush Holt of New Jersey, the U.S. Department of Education, and the White House, Car uh, White House Office of Presidential Correspondence Unit. As another uh, uh, only at GW Experience, Logan was one of 13 GW students in the unit last spring. Eventually, Logan became team lead for the hard mail portfolio. Other only at GW experiences for Logan included, include attending the third annual World Internet Conference in China and the Price of Freedom course with Professor Tom Long that took him to Normandy, France and the American Cemetery at Omaha Beach. Perhaps Logan's proudest accomplishment has been his role as battalion commander of the Army ROTC program, where he was responsible for the mentorship, training, and well-being of 130 cadets from D.C. area schools. After graduation, Logan will leave for Fort Benning, Georgia, in three days only, where he will begin his infantry basic officer's leadership course. Following the 17-week course, Logan will serve an eight-year commitment as an officer in the U.S. Army. Logan believes that what sustained his success at GW was an unrelenting dedication to the improvement of whatever organization he was a part and the incredible network of mentors he met. Certain that he will someday return to Washington, D.C., Logan expects to share lessons learned from his roles in mentorship positions with the next generation of GW leaders and the alumni network. By example and dedication, Logan has shown that one can balance learning and achievement with a commitment to making our school and this city a better place. As Logan heads off to his military assignment, he recognizes that his journey may change course in the years ahead. And though, as a GW graduate, he is certain of the firmness of his connection with the Columbian College and all it has imparted. On behalf of the GW Alumni Association and your fellow classmates, I congratulate you on your accomplishments and look forward to your future involvement in the George Washington University Alumni Association. Logan, congratulations and best wishes. A number of our graduates have been selected to receive special awards, prizes, or honors. Let me call your attention to the names of those awardees who are listed inside your program. Additionally, this year's Phi Beta Kappa inductees were honored at ceremonies earlier this week. At this time, we'd like to recognize the remarkable accomplishments and talents of our graduates by first asking all of the Luther Rice and undergraduate re research fellows to please stand and remain standing. Thank you. Good. Would uh, all of the Phi Beta Kappa graduates please stand and join them?
May I uh, also ask anyone who appeared on the Dean's List this year to stand as well. Or the Dean's List any year in attendance. And those who finished a capstone paper or exhibition or project, in fact, any exam or paper or special project or juried work or recital. Thank you, you may be seated. <laughs> it's now our pleasure to introduce one by one, your sons and daughters, spouses, parents, and special friends, whose noble achievement we celebrate with these festivities. In order that none of the names of our honorees will get lost, we ask that you withhold your applause until all of the graduates have been presented, at which time we'll join together in saluting all. As Dean Vincent, takes his place in front of the podium. Let me ask the faculty marshals to please step forward and introduce the graduates to our guests. Again, please hold your congratulations until all have been presented. Afterwards, yes, sounds great. All right. And I'll might be one or two No problem. Right. Yeah, yeah, I've done this a couple times, so that sounds great. But I, I always like the guidance, though. Yeah. From the Department of Economics, Dr. Donald Parsons. Alexander Profacci. Liam Huffman. David Lincoln, Nicholas Valderrama, Brendan Shanahan, Oluwatobi Adewale, Andrea Bolognese, Ben Fitch, Zach Phi, Sarah Pagan, Michael Merriam, Tapasia Das, David Clemens, Nathan Gard. Jack Jomaron, Robert Hausman, Abigail Eddy, Jonathan Anderson, Xin Tong, Yuen Ding, Dylan Wall, Taylor Schmidt Matuis. Kira Hattenbach, Alexander Baktat, Timothy Hartwell, Lindsay Bouchard, Ik Jun Choi, Sadiq El Amin, Witt Buckley. Dylan Scheinberg, Douglas Laboff, Han Zeng, Khan 
Uchkin. Dina Abd El Maged. Sahil Kalyani. Kazuma Engel Kemier. Mackenzie Moore. Benjamin Luke Kirschner. Gregory Gaffney Bills. Matthew Downey. Andrew Nell. Brandon Anderson. Hannah Bayer. Jordan Sasa. Arpit Patel. Nicholas Sapunzis. Ziad Aziz. Timothy Ruben Rosier Bird. Aaron Wilson. Mark DuPont. Austin Hansen. Nancy Manabak. Lauren Hoffman. Luke Orfanides. Daniel Finelli, Haley Myers, Kevin Matthew, Amanda Zen, Vadehi Patel, Aaron Miguel Morales, Zach Bernstein. Hadrian Balaban, Alexander Morris, Amber Mesa, Marina Middleton, Almagard. Lee Almagard, Jawea Song. Guangzhou Lu, Songlin Li, Charles Norfleet, Julia Grico, Yeshwant Chilakuru, Muki Simon, Adam Cespedes Zaman. Greg Chumakov, Kevin Setti, Cecilia Egan, Iman Said, Caitlin Hendy, Megan Fitzgerald. Miles Dong, Emma Green West, Christian Michael, Liz Bailey Mena, Waris Mohammed, Harry Page Salisbury, Justin Henderson. George Kremos, Daniel Colani, Stephen Hess, Anna Gulardo, Gabriel Burgoyne, Marula Sosa. Nick Condry, Ijun Liu, Yisei Yang, Hanzu Huang, Yuzhong Den, 
Shlifan Wang. Zhu. Nuo Zhu. Si. Yongchen Si. <laughs> Lengling Chin Yang. Jianan Lao. Yuting Luo. Che Hun Ling. Taz Wung Li. Young Sat Choi. Anthony Cyprian Christian. Now for the Department of Political Science and Political Science Public Policy, Professor Susan Wiley. <laughs> Christian Foster. Daniel Ho. Peter Purcell. Sullivan Gassman. Victoria Gonzalez. Gurmini Singh. Singh. Zoe Hopkins Ward. Matthew Grimo. Marilyn Schwartz. Samantha Lewis. Prakriti Luthra. Lindsay Mackinson, Emma Zimmerman, Rhett Nunihoff, Jamie Weiss, Moshe Pasternak, Jackson Richmond, Natalie Tracy. Pencil. Vincent Pencil. Yeah. Ryan Sweeney. Yeah. Hannah Burt. Chait. Hannah Chait. Yeah. Lee Benjamin Winkler. Yeah. Eric Yang. Yeah. Celeste Her, Grace Herring, Andrea Millman, Libby Wooler, Sydney Rachel Levin Epstein. Addison St. Ange William Moses, Timothy Kelly, Ariana Hay, Blaine Udis, Emmeline George, Alexa Browning. Tariq Abdel Kudus, Sheridan Hoover, Shojay. Mimi Shojay, Saud Bin Mamar, Tyler Smith, Ryan Rizzo. Sarah Rabate, Colin Stana Winter, Logan Davis, Catherine Aliota, Daniel Perumal, Guillermo Jose Martinez, Jonathan Adams, 
Sabrina Pierce. Alex Hosmeyer. Andrew Benedict Hune. Daniel Kim. Stephanie Spindle. Ian Martin. J.R. Getz. David Siebel. Nicholas Madaloni. Clayton Bryan. Joseph Spitzman. Margo. Margo Baynard. Nyan Min. Derek Wong. Jessica Baum. Joseph Lemoyne. Tiffany Butler. Sean Day Clark. Thomas J. Clark. Gregory Costa. Bijan Ameli. Josue Munoz. Rosandra Acosta. Samantha Blake. Evan Bercy. Taja El Shabazz. Brooke Walker. Rave. William Rave. Gabriel Bravo. Kinat Akram. Zinab Bakila. Connie Chow. Kyle Edward Waldman. Gavin Michael Rose. Russell Bauman. Kyle Potswal. Matthew Epstein. Matthew Brigstock. Benjamin Davidovich. Braden Domier. Patrick Kelly. Spencer William Legred. Thomas Rowland. Jade Soab. Omid Ansari. Abigail Hart. Jean-Pierre Godillot. Quay Dang. Jack Rametta. Tianshan Fulop. Bridget Smith. Jacob Berman. Charles Brereton. Drew Walker. Alec M. DeFruscia. Haley Jones. Mairead Cahill. Adelaide Morgan. Sally Gillis. Alexa Tanzi. Addison Weingard. Kaylee Deaton. Jessica Hang. Jennifer Sherman. Sonia Desai. Madeline Tume.
Danielle Page Apfel. Hallelujah Hadero. Charles Griffin. Daniel Hugo. Christopher Hemway. Tyler Giles. William Innes. Benjamin Modichai Strongin. Nikhil Pruti. Jonathan Cooper Shembor. John Noland. Anna Zakaria. Kayla Solomon. Ryan O'Malley. Jordan Pantalone. Ashley Meza. Alexandra Simoni. Arian Rubio. Elliot Benjamin Reisner. Curtis Stahl. Spencer Ebach. Aaron Kaufman. Taylor Elena Lashley. Sarah Sperling. Danielle Toluca. Ileana Sands. Nicholas Mizell. Nathan Perlmutter. Samuel Nitre. Kylie Madden. Jiyuan Huang. Connor Barrett. Brant Bethke. Alexander Lipo. Tiffany Jesdene Monzon. Emily Nicole Fader. Quinn Jones. Sydney Hart. Caroline Zeno. Christian Marzullo. Unjoan Kim. Rachel Ehrenberg. Spencer Perry. Adriana Caruso. Zachary Udin. Nello Keith Lang. Tyler Kane. Christopher McCann. Samuel Jansen. Jedediah Blake the second. Michelle Bastaki. Gab Gabrielle Crushar. Eileen McKee. Kara Salfino. Megan Exanthos. Anna Diros. Isaden Arian. Robin Dichiacinto. Andrew Bowles. Angela Grachowski. Timothy Jackson. Stephanie Lascano. Chelsea Mullen. Kathleen Hunt. Christine Farzan. Peter Kim. Sure. 
Joyce Lynn Kane. Yeah, I think it's immediate. Yeah. School of Media and Public Affairs, Professor Silvio Weisbord. Hallie, Hallie Faye Goldberg. Sarah Merkin. Ben Ray Maley. Jacob Lessick. Jennifer Canis. Jessica Weingarten. Chris Gellian. Tatiana Sersano, Natalie Maher, Gina McAlpin, Eric Robinson, Tim Palmieri, Madeline Ashworth, Melvin Chase Smith. Okay. Rachel Konzos. Zoe Spugvogel. Sorry. Anna Sumi. Jenna Hope Spunt. Wan Ye Zhu. Claire Himes. Drew Lawrence. Yeah. Andrew Desiderio. Yeah. Thomas yeah. Falsicone. Yeah. Bo Erickson. Yeah. Deepa Shivram. Yeah. Alexandra Cruz. Yeah. Jamie Finkelstein. Katherine Walsh, Rachel, Rachel Faulkner, Sophia H. K. Wolbrum, Marissa Elizabeth Deaver, sorry, Emma G. Ashworth, Blair Gould. Misha Marat, Alana Edwards, yeah! Alyssa Nunez, yeah! Elizabeth Lepro, Hannah Cunningham, Taniola Ayola, yeah! Kelly Gao. Zaid Jorbaji, Mark Eisenhower, Avery Annapol, Victoria Sheridan, Robin Eberhardt, Jacqueline Thompson, Thomas Fusco, Kyle Kirkhart, Quinn Scallon, Caitlin Manning, Mary Grace Brown, Natalia Gervich, Morgan Routman, John Weber, Michael Falco, Brittany Gellerman, Scott Nover, Brian La Madrid, Alexa Smith Rummel, Patrick Nolan, Madison Ponce, Sean Raymond, Martin McSherry. 
Brian Seamus Doherty, Danielle Cohen, Tatiana Given, Celeste, Celeste Egazino, Haley Nolan, Simone Jackenthal, Vanessa Baco, Danielle Gillen, Brooke Layton, Jody Green, Emma Grundhauser, Emily Carlin, Shanil Jelani, Samuel Allman, Sarah Steen, Mary Ingalls, Emily Perlstein, Rebecca Connolly, Danielle Bagligo, Catherine Hess, Madeline Stoltz, Jack Linehan, yes! Kyle Chin, Dante Fernandez, Megan Hempsey, Kelsey Joanne McGill, Christian Schaefer, Janine Marie, Eva Palmer, Haley Rogers, Seamus Roddy, Macaulay Porter, Taylor Walters, Eric Martyr, Gabrielle Lucille Marone, William Christian, Department of Sociology, Diane Eglitis. Michelle Desin. Julian Berkowitz. Alexander Rose Delicio. Scott Rothstein. Andrew Berendis. Joe Young Kim, Kimberly Tanner, Sarah Tupi, Duncan Calhoun, Joanna Corin, Anat Nuglase, Melanie Piskai. Kayla Williams, Saraya Manar Hadid, Toby Oweyame, Mariah Green, Rebecca Georges, Celia. Celia Islam, Department of Criminal Justice, Nicole Laforte, Mukhaya Krishir, Amanda Pearson, Lauren Blankenau, Ashley Wilson, Morgan Talls, Louis McHenry III, Roja. Andrew Roja, Rachel Holtz, Rachel Schwartzman, Dana Sherman, Siran Nalbandian. 
Kelly Daly. Caroline Hitley. Victoria Montanero. Taylor Heath. Jeffrey Schechter. Jack Colhane. Taral Mamadli. Uh, Department of Human Services and Social Justice, Dr. Emily Morrison. Rachel Noggle. Leah Cohen. Victoria Rowe. Allison Edwards. Emily Pearl Ben. Carla Davila. Rebecca Faith Levy. Tess Gahn. Pauline Kim. Allie Perry. Maggie Ganera. Sarah Paula Castro. Aaron Agnew. Charlene Smith. Brian Wasick. Abigail Marco. Teresa Cal. Okay. What's, what's, what's Carol Singleman, Dr. Carol Singleman with the Department of Psychology. Catherine Elson. Brianna Byrne. Ileana DiCarlo. Alexa Y Dance. Ariandari Sogu. Catherine Rudoy, Kelsey Sherman, Zachary Motes, Jasmine Tall, Jamila Viscano, Elizabeth Percy, Sarah Ayub, Megan Joseph, Mursal Azam Motaseb. <laughs> Kyra Washington. Morgan Olivier Rosser. Ryan Owusu. Nicole Smith. Emily Richard. Richard Schiavone. Nicole Suiku. Gabriella Cohn. Paige Tripp. Hey, what's up? Sabine Fried. Rose Novak. Abby Coulter, Margaret Talbot, Talbot or Talbot? Annie Talbot, Gia, Gia Chawala, Shelley Sharma, Tom Malik, Alyssa Gabis. Diane Taxe. Rachel Ekigami. Paul Scotti. Isabella Teormina. Laura McKenna. Braden Adams. Ashley Shell. Yash Shah. 
Venita Wren. Stefana Klippa. How do you say your last name? Margarita Bronstein. Joyce Ingari. Brianna Bailey. Chioma Aneki. Madison Brubaker. Pichamo Sirijantanan. Elizabeth Dlugi. Alicia Young. Jessica Allen. Jocelyn Faith Trovati. Lindsay Rose Matthew. Logan Arb Oberholzer. Salina Janosik. Sophie Moskowitz. Julia Aspelund. Ning Xuan Wang, Grace Sun, Dana Kimmelsteel, Michaela Thompson, Simone Robbins, Jean Carl Arkebauer. Mariana de la Maza Garcia. Lara Mate Davula. Camilo Hanau. Sony Shake. Chelsea Voronov. Ramon. Ruman Hoke. Wesley Alexander Longley. Priya Kumar. Tabasom Sanjida. Paulina Kepchenska. Brittany Herzenberg. Aviva Stone, Audrey Milton, William Ott, Samuel Kaminer, Michelle Ritota, Abigail Wolf, Paige Morrow, Alana Kravitz, Dylan Wecht, Justin Burke, Benjamin Gibbons, Kaylin Tansel Sudit, Jennifer Gentile, Kaylin Yao, Patrick Anderson, Bradley Breland. Corin Arabinidijad, Jen C. Boyce, Samantha Rose Berger, Mackenzie Rice Hollis, Emma Michelle Rye Omohundro, Jennifer Mara Gittleman. Raquel Gindi, Jordan Bloom, David Rusak, George Maring, Emily Durr, Lillian Wolfenson, Jay Propasil. 
Sayer Husseini. Sarah Wisniewski. Samantha Johanna Robbins. Mally Zakin. Rachel Brotman. Rachel Covey. Sophia Trivas. Alan Allen. Allison Katona. David Giordano. Adam Lurie. Freddie Marcio. Morgan Moore. Douglas Krukoff. Ladies and gentlemen, my, my script says that I was supposed to give you the cue for that, but, so I, but we've done it. It's now my pleasure to call upon Dean Ben Vincent III to deliver his charge to the graduating class. A professor of history and dean of the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, Dean Vincent is an acknowledged teacher scholar with our faculty. He continues the tradition of excellence that is at the core of Columbian College. Dean Vincent, I'm pleased to present to you your graduating class of the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, the class of 2017. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wade. Thank you for your introduction and for helping to facilitate this remarkable celebration of students, scholars, family and friends. I've got to say this is one of the strongest classes that I've had the chance to, uh, to meet. And I absolutely know this because while it is a distinct pleasure to shake each and every one of your hands, my goodness, <laughs> you guys have some hard handshakes. <laughs> Once again, to our graduating class, congratulations, you did it. Listen, by the time this weekend closes, you will be holders of a diploma from the George Washington University. Here's to you. Now, it's, it's no surprise this weekend's graduation exercises are steeped in pageantry and symbolism. They are emblematic of the passing of knowledge from one generation to the next. Today encapsulates a moment in time representing all that you've accomplished as a student. It is now your turn to confer knowledge. It's your turn to advance your field, to move the goalposts of existing intellectual frontiers. The graduation gowns that you wear, they symbolize the power of knowledge and creativity. 
as well as your transformative ability to improve the world through your work. So while today marks the end of one journey, and I know for many of you it's a seemingly endless journey, you've been in the trenches of your exams, your capstone projects, navigating the minefields around coursework, breathing the fire of your professors. So while today marks the end of this journey, it also represents the beginning of another life journey for you. Your regalia represents and signifies your opportunity. It signifies your tomorrow. A tomorrow that I am confident will be as awe-inspiring as the pageantry of our commencement exercises. Now, as you enjoy this weekend, its festivities, its camaraderie, the gatherings with friends and family, and everything that accompanies it, I also hope that you find some time to meditate on your experience at GW. Now listen, I know this is hard to do when there is so much that is spinning around you, particularly during the rush of events that lead up to this graduation moment. So let me remind you of the obvious. Too often, we take things in life for granted. And this includes our education. Too often, as we build our intellectual muscle memory through the coursework that we do, through our studying, through, through everything that is associated with college, we simultaneously almost become a bit robotic in our thoughts and our actions. Now, this is an irony. Universities, and particularly colleges of arts and sciences, we strive to develop critical thinking in our students. But at times, the very method of making critical thinkers and critical learners also makes the use of these skills too routine. So today, class of 2017, let me issue you all a challenge. If you do anything over the next 24 hours, please take just a few moments to reflect on what you've learned at GW. Process what this means in your life. Remind yourself why you chose to pursue a degree in the College of Arts and Sciences. Now, if any of you manage to do this successfully, let me then issue you a second challenge. Repeat this reflective process at least once a month for the rest of your lives. By doing this exercise, it is my hope that you will continue to rekindle your creative juices and reignite your intellectual passion, regardless of what happens to you in life, regardless of whatever job you take. Most importantly, if you do this, you will reanimate that part of your brain where critical thinking is part of your thought processes. What I ask actually is, may seem simple, but it's actually a bit hard to do. In this high-tech era of continual and furious change, there are endless demands that are competing for our attention. Now, yes, we all know that these are the distractions and the highlights, in some ways, and benefits of living in a modern society. But at the same time, we must realize that these distractions collectively also threaten to drown out the liberal arts, the liberal, the liberal arts and sciences, and neuter their relevance. So to overcome the technological habits and the practices of our multitasked lives, we, as graduates of the arts and sciences, must return to asking ourselves the questions that rest at the core of our fields. What is a meaningful life? Why are we here? Why are things the way they are? How do we become better people? How do we build better societies? Now, unlike my friend Paul, uh, when I first arrived at GW, I actually liked the place. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I've had the fortunate pleasure of being the Dean of the Columbia College for four years now, and every day I do consider this job a blessing. It is truly one of the best jobs in the world. Let me let you in on a secret. The reason why is really because of you, because of our faculty because of the human and institutional resources that we have access to. I am 
and to the rest of the faculty, we are deeply inspired by what you have achieved. We are truly excited about where you will be going from here. It is because of you that the faculty give everything that they have for your education. We ask you to take forward our faith in you, to let our faith empower you to become the next scientists who are exploring ways to create clean energy or, or the next clinicians helping to ease the conflicts of the mind, to, to be the next policy experts finding diplomatic solutions to age-old problems and battles, or the businessmen and businesswomen who will be running successful operations through data analysis and creative expertise. You will be the next artists and academ academicians creating new knowledge and new aesthetics through the power of your minds. Indeed, where would this world be without you? Without students trained in the engaged and connected liberal arts. You are our innovators. You are our humanitarians, our future in moving this global society forward. Now let me be clear, great things await you. But for right now, and I know because I've, I've whispered in some of your ears as you were walking across the stage, some of you are a bit fidgety about what's next. Some of you even said, I have no idea what I'm doing next. I vividly recall as if it was yesterday my own cluelessness when I landed my first job at Barnard College. When I reported for my first day, I was given the keys to my office and I was told to get to work. Yeah. Yeah. I opened the office door, I looked at a computer that was beautiful computer, brand new, top of the line on my desk, a beautiful Aeron chair. Uh, uh, and I was, I just sat down and started spinning around for the first 10 or 15 minutes, you know? There was no guidance. I had no idea what I was actually supposed to do. I had to make it up along the way. This may be you, but you will be okay. Be confident in your knowledge and what you have experienced through your extraordinary journeys through the classrooms, through laboratories, to sites around this great city, and even to sites around the world. You've written formulas, you've analyzed policy, you've deciphered our past, delved deep into the inner workings of the brain, engaged the creative spirit, and searched for ways to protect our environment. The collective moments and the connections that you've made, these are the things that you will continue to draw upon as you move forward. This weekend, you will move from being students to being our alumni. You're going to join the ranks of a pretty impressive group of graduates. They include world-renowned physicists, a publisher of the Big Bang Theory, a first lady, a Nobel laureate, US legislators, global leaders, Emmy-winning journalists, innovative entrepreneurs, and accomplished artists. This is your network now. Engage them. Stay connected if you can. Give back if you can. Mentor a student. Support a project so that others may pursue what you have achieved here today. Though you may move far away from Foggy Bottom, beyond the Columbian College, beyond GW, we hope that you will continue to remain an active part of this vibrant colonial community. Graduates, there's electricity in this air. I felt it for the first time when I arrived. I feel it pulsating now. Something special is here, and it's every one of you. GW students are like none other. You are ready for the world's challenges, ready to shape the world in your image. Year after year, I've been proven right by our graduating classes, each distinct in its own way, each better than the other. The faculty, our community, and all who are here as witnesses are confident in everything that you will achieve. So today, we collectively pause, everyone in this forum, to salute you. As you move onward, continue to be the best you can be. Do it by pausing every now and then. Reflect on those seemingly disconnected aspects of your lives. Do it by multiplying your moments of your life experiences into something greater for the benefit of our society. Seek opportunity. Do not wait for it to find you. Ex 
exercise your muscle memory. Absorb new knowledge while continuing to build your skill set. Allow passion to guide you and create a meaningful life. I don't know if there are any more cliches I can, I can use. <laughs> you get the point. Class of 2017, good luck and congratulations. Thank you, Dean Vincent. Graduates, please remember to wear your Columbian College medal um, at the National Mall when you're introduced and recognized by the dean. I trust you'll let everyone in Washington know that you're present. A sincere note of thanks to those who helped make today special for all of our graduates, including the wonderful staff of the dean's office in the Smith Center, Robert Birch, director of uh, University Bands, the Potomac Brass, and Professors Kimberly Gross and Nils Olson for introducing our graduates. Their pronunciation of the names indicates the college's global reach. And a very special thanks to one of our faculty colleagues who could not be here today, Professor Michael King, Chair of the Chemistry Department. When I said I was the college's faculty marshal, I should have said faculty marshal for the day. I merely a stand-in for Professor King, who this weekend is celebrating his son's graduation with a master's degree from California State University, Northridge. Professor King is the one who oversees the organization and implementation of the ceremony, who herds the respective categories of cats that are assembled for it, and who would otherwise be standing before you saying what I've been saying. Knowing Michael, he will likely review video footage of my performance <laughs> and send detailed commentary to the dean. Thank you, Professor King. Ladies and gentlemen, as you leave the building, please be mindful of your safety and that of your party. You'll be exiting onto a busy street full of city traffic. Rather than linger for photos and greetings nearby, we recommend that you move to the open space in the University Yard or Co Kogan Plaza or Bertucci's. <laughs> to close our program, we ask everyone to join uh, recently minted graduate Daniel Finelli in the singing of the GW alma mater, the words and music of which you may find at the end of the program. Before we do that, however, let me do this. Immediately after the alma mater, this year's distinguished scholar, Paul Scotty, will come forward and accept the school pennant from Dean Vincent. Following this symbolic act, signifying the conveyance of knowledge from one generation to the next, Mr. Scotty will lead the platform party and faculty from the arena. We'll appreciate your kindness in remaining in your places until the conclusion of the program and the dean's party, the faculty, and graduates have left the arena. Uh, he's down there. He's down there, but I think you're here. Am I here? Yeah.